In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this insane paper rip transition effect using the Depth Scanner plugin. If you already have this plugin and want to get a drag and drop template to achieve this entire effect in just one click, check the first link in the description down below. But now let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is create an adjustment layer on which we're going to add the turbulence displace effect. Set the amount to 36, the size to 10, and the complexity to 10. We're then going to keyframe the evolution, so go to the first frame, hit the stopwatch icon, then go forward 5 seconds, add 10 rotations, then reclick the stopwatch icon while holding Alt and add the loop out expression. We can now add a fast box blur effect to the same adjustment layer and set the blur radius to around 0.5 and the iterations to 1. Next, you'll also want to add a tint effect to that same adjustment layer and set the A color to white. We'll finish things off with a drop shadow effect, which we're going to set to 100% opacity. Now we can set the adjustment layer's blending mode to soft light, but as you can see, it messed up the contrast of our original footage. And the way we're going to fix that is by creating another adjustment layer, putting it in the middle and adding a exposure effect and changing the gamma correction to 0.6. And as you can see, the footage now looks unedited, which is exactly what we want. The next step is going to be to add a depth scanner effect to the source layer. This is a paid plugin, but trust me, it is worth it. And then change the mapping mode to raw and this setting to slicing. We can now play around with the minimum slicing value. And guys, how crazy is that? You can see we have automatic paper cutouts being applied to our video. Make sure to add a posterized time set to 8 FPS to both the source footage and the top adjustment layer. That way our paper rips are not moving too quickly. We can now keyframe the minimum slicing value to create this paper rip transition over time. And as you can see, it already looks pretty cool. For this specific scene, I think I'm going to mask out the floor so that the paper rips start off on the trucks and then go out in the background. And the way we're going to do that is by duplicating our source clip, getting rid of the depth scanner effect, then masking out our scene just like so. Thankfully, this was shot on a tripod, so it makes it a whole lot easier, but obviously this is completely optional. This already looks a million times cooler, but obviously our subject is going under the paper cutout, which is not what we want. So duplicate the source clip, keep the posterized time, but make sure to delete the mask and then roto out your subject. And as you can see, our subject is now going perfectly on top of our paper cutouts. And guys, just look at the amount of details in the transitions. Like it actually looks like the paper is ripping on the floor. This just looks absolutely insane. And the fact we can achieve this effect so quickly is absolutely mind blowing to me. And what's cool about this entire effect is you can take it as a base and build on top of it. So obviously this is a alpha transition, so everything is transparent. So we can pre-compose our entire comp and put something different under it. Possibilities are truly endless. I usually like to add back the source footage under the actual transition itself. That way we have a sort of effect reveal when we add some different effects to that specific layer. The Xerox grain effect, for example, looks absolutely stunning when revealed through this paper rip transition effect. Another creative way I like to utilize this technique is to add an additional layer of texture to my mixed media animations. By choosing a specific slicing value, which is going to add little paper rips throughout my entire video based on the actual position and depth of whatever's going on in the footage itself. Obviously, this is more of a advanced technique, but I built a drag and drop template that allows you to do all of that in just one click. So make sure to check it out using the first link in the description down below if that's something you'd see yourself using. And also make sure to check the other links where you'll find all of my assets and tools. But that'll be pretty much it for today, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. Make sure to let me know which tutorials you want to see next. And on that note, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.